Hi, this is Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes, and I'm back with my second box from Sally at Vintage Discoveries. This is a craft lot that I purchased from Sally. I think it was, oh, 30, oh, five, some, 33, $35 for the lot, uh, plus postage. And uh, I haven't taken a look at anything in this. I've just opened the box so that I could uh, open up right in front of you. So, it's organized in two bags. So I think I'm going to... Oh, but this is a bag of necklaces. And this is a bag of... Oh, all kinds of different things. So this is a craft lot. I think I'm going to take the pins first. Or mostly pins or whatever. And I'll probably end up doing this as two um, two videos because there's so much stuff now let's see if we can focus in on this almost looks like a Sarah Coventry piece but I know it's not um, let me just put the pin back in the back where it belongs so I don't end up sticking myself so there's a little there's a, some green leaves, but you can't really see them. I don't know if this got squashed at some point. I would love to uh, sort of remold this so that you could see the enameled leaves. They all have lovely greenish enamel on them. Uh, there's some a little bit of dirt in there, but I don't see anything really wrong with this except that it's kind of out of shape. So I would lift these up. To the center probably oh there you can see the you know that one's yeah you get a better sense of what it looks like there we go that's improved already nice uh, nice brooch again craft lot so um, not necessarily meant to be um, perfect well this is interesting seed bead by cones some other polished rounds. I think these are glass beads. They certainly, well, I guess they could be agate, dyed agate. Where's my little glass container? Just a second. You would think I would be better, more prepared. Yeah, sounds like, uh, sounds like glass. But some very nice pieces. I would uh, take this apart, probably. I mean, it's nothing wrong with it. You could wear it as a as it is. But I would take it apart and reuse the stones. I'll put the bracelet over there. Ooh. Okay. Well, there's a string. Nothing on it. I don't need any pieces of string. Here's. Ooh, this is kind of cool. It's got a little. Was that a, probably a crack? Oh, isn't that sweet? Sweet little uh, uh, plastic or acrylic pin. Like little uh, daisies with uh, missing some paint from their red centers. I like that. It's cute. It's showing up much lighter uh, on the screen than uh, I think it is in my hand. But very, very pretty, very light. And I'm just going to look at this section here that looks like a crack to see if I can figure out if it really is a crack. Okay, so if it's a crack, it doesn't come right through to the other side. So I would probably stabilize that and put a little bit of paint on it and uh, I might you know, add some more red back onto those and that'd be fun to wear. You know me, I hate to throw anything away. A black ring. A black ring that fits me. I wonder what it's made out of. It might be made out of horn. It's got some kind of interesting stuff in the center there. Is that make sh you think it's a piece of horn ring? It's very light, but it's uh doesn't sound quite like glass. But it's beautiful color. Very wearable ring. Okay, so for being a craft lot, I haven't got too many crafty things yet. 
Here is what? Oh, this is weird. Sorry. That's <laughs> not what I meant to say. This is different. Um, okay, so I can see why this is in a craft lot. It's got um, these discs, hammered discs, or shaped discs hanging from them. They're very scratched and worn. You could take those off since there's already some missing, definitely, from the lower lower part of the... Uh, there we go. So there's some missing from the lower tier. Um, take those all off, and this would be a, a much more wearable necklace right there. Now these are not glass pearls, but some of these beads are glass. That's glass, that's glass. Those look like some some chips of stones. So quite a combination of things. Those are too identical to be real pearl, real uh, pearls, I think. So a variety of beads, interesting colors, and I would just uh, get rid of those discs and then decide what to do with this. There's uh, a little heart dangle on the end. I'm not sure if that's a maker's insignia has a lobster claw clasp so bracelets put this over with the necklaces what else have we got in here oh rhinestones you know I like rhinestones you know I like repairing things with rhinestones this is a rhinestone brooch that wants to tangle with a necklace so I'm just gonna gently um, try to could there we go okay so here is the back, very good shape. So the the strips of uh, uh, oh, I've forgotten the name of these. The boxed rhinestones are all soldered together, and the back's nicely finished. A nice uh, C clasp. Some nice marquee shape here. They're going a little dark, so it could be that they've had some water damage. There's some definitely some some blackened or dead crystals up there, and a few over there, and a few down here. This is the oh, sorry. As you can see, if I zoom in on it, you can see the darkened crystals. They're not meant to be dark. Um, I don't think. Um, yeah, so like on the end, that one for sure, probably the one beside it. Many of the uh, these on the outside rim, definitely that one, and not those as much. Anyway, there, this can be totally be repaired, or you might make it a make a virtue of the darkened stones and put them all on the outside edge, so that you have that contrast with then versus the bright shiny stones on the inside. Not sure what I'm going to do, um, but lots of potential. I'll have fun with that one. Here, oh, a cool watch with marcasites. Little teeny tiny numbers. This class, oh, the class works like that. Oh, let's see. I love marcasite watches. Does this fit me? Problem with these is, uh, oh, it just just fits. If I lose uh, a few more pounds, it'll probably fit. I've lost twenty three and a half pounds since Easter. It's slow going, but hey, if I can keep this up, I will meet my goal in a year, so, um, or less. But uh, I love marcasites. I love this fancy band. And you know what? Sometimes the joy of wearing a, uh, a watch is not to be able to tell the time, but because it's pretty jewelry. Now, it... When you first look at it, the marcasites go around here and they go around here, but it there doesn't seem to be any there. And there's none there. So and I don't see any little holes or spots where the marcasites could go in. Um 
I don't see any that are missing. On the back of this it says Elcon, or maybe that's Icon, sorry, if I zoom it up here, Icon, E-I-K-O-N. So I'll have to look up and uh, see what, uh, I don't know if, it, if it's a wind-up, I don't think so. Anyway, pretty pretty little watch. Oh, it'll get me every time with the blingy stuff. Okay. Now, this chain has gotten itself... There we go. Zoom in. All right, beautiful rhinestone and faux pearls. They're kind of gray faux pearls. This one is... Uh, little rough this one's missing that one's missing easily repairable if I can find matching colored pearls which I have a good collection of uh, vintage pearls for making repairs so this is uh, very pretty I'll uh, don't oh it's hard to tell about the rhinestones down here. There's, there might be one missing right down there. There's, oh, there aren't tiny rhinestones in the end. It's just textured there. So missing two pearls and got some broken pearls. But uh, Nice vintage piece. I like the shape of it. Cornerstone Forge. Yeah, you can see that. I don't know if this is... Um, feels like pewter, that sort of waxiness that pewter sometimes has, but it's very light. So interesting dogwood flower. Obviously handmade. Um, hmm. Pretty. I was going to say, oh, this is an interesting brooch, but guess what? <laughs> it's a single pierced earring. No markings? I don't think I see another earring. Oh, there's one of the, there's a pearl. A missing pearl. Um, so there's a single earring. That could be taken apart and repurposed. Oh, <laughs> there. This goes in the granddaughter jewelry. It's a little uh, hair clip. Clean that up and give it her. Give it to her. This is kind of cute. It's um. Yeah, it's some kind of clay, like a polymer clay. It looks like it could be china, but it's um, it's not. And I guess that's why it has been saved from being chipped and broken over the years. Though there's a few little chippers, perhaps, up on those. Maybe not. I mean, these are very good shape. These are all great. So I'll just have to get in there. Maybe a little, but that could be just be part of the design of that flower. Interesting. Not sure what I would do with this. But very pretty. Um, another pin riveted together. Ooh, cool. So sort of a flame. It's got these interesting textured dots up here. And then rhinestones running down the side there. So a lot happening here. We've got some shiny gold, some texture gold, some some dotted gold. A little missing a little bit of gold at the tip there, but that's easily repaired. No markings on the back. The back's uh, in excellent shape. So I wonder if how, if it was how much it was ever worn. 
Oh, a horseshoe, uh, a horseshoe pin. This looks a little older. Let me see if I can. It's got a little teeny tiny, not, um, let's see. Oh, okay. So this is a little more unusual clasp. It goes in that position and then like that to close. So I would say that's an older type of clasp. It's missing a pearl. The pearls were wired in, I think. Oh, they are also kind of a flattened pearl. So I have a few flattened pearls, not too many. But I could see repairing that. Very nice. These are some challenging repair pieces. Not When I thought of craft lot, I thought of nothing quite as nice as this. So thanks, Sally. Well, this is cool. It's part of something. It's got some really nice oval rhinestones, baguettes, and then circular rhinestones. Some of the baguettes are a little yellow. That's, these ovals are really good quality rhinestones, but there's nothing that help kind of tells me, oh, maybe something's broken off here. There's kind of some gray bits. Oh, and there's a, there's a, oh, I see. Okay, so there's a, there's a loop on this side. And there's a, where is it? If I focus in it, you can kind of see that there's a broken loop on that side. So this would have hung on a chain, from a chain. So there's, on this side I have the loop, on this side I don't. So that's a pretty straightforward soldering job. And then I can add, who knows what, oh, I could add. If Could you see this with uh, a rhinestone chain on either side of this? Talk about its stupendous. Not sure about the yellowed baguettes through there. How to make a virtue of those, or whether they could be replaced. Just, that's a lot of, those are good sized baguettes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's a uh, couple dollars of baguettes or maybe more. Eleven. Sometimes they're like six in a lot for vintage baguettes. I have to think about that one, how far I'm going to go in terms of repair. Oh! Look at this. So, so I was telling you on that um, sort of dogwood brooch how there was this beautiful enameling on the leaves. Well, here's one you can see because there's a leaf that has broken off. So, me and my glue. There is a, there's something called JB Weld, which is a type of um, epoxy with metal in it that you can use for welding these things back on. It goes right there. So that's where it's broken from. So I'll have to see if I'm if I'm going to glue it or if I'm going to try to solder it back on. Oh, a boot! A boot buckle! A belt buckle! A rodeo belt buckle! Oh, that is fun! I just need to get some, get me some leather and Put it together, and what does it say? Nickel silver. I love that. So we all know that nickel silver is not silver, but to be labeled in that way, it's a, it's an older uh, label. I like the uh, the coloring on that. I don't know if that's a, a discoloration or if it's supposed to be that goldy tone. Anyway, cool belt buckle. Oh, I like that. This is. Oh, an earring. Plastic in the tortoise shell design. I only see one. Here I'm gonna. Oh, here's a leaf. 
that came off of, oh, I see where it came off of. Came off of there. So there's a, a little glue. A little glue, a little love, and it'll be good as new. Oh, yeah, here, there we go. A little love, a little glue, and it'll be good as new. I could be a poet if I didn't know it. Oh, this is cute. Birds and flowers. Hummingbirds. Oh, this is so cute. The clasp is kind of stiff. No marking on the clasp. Oh, no marking on the back. But. Lovely little hummingbird bracelet. Almost would go with my uh, purple earrings that uh, I got in the vintage box from Sally. You could, I mean, if you wanted to, you could take all these pieces apart and use them in other things. But I kind of like that bracelet just the way it is. What do you think? Okay. Oh, a pair of earrings on some nice ear wires. These would be nice on... Um, on better wires, a different. I, I would probably put them on um, a more substantial lever back. I don't like the kidney wires, just personally, but they're also not really the kind of earrings I would wear. So we'll see. Not a big deal. I got a chain that's stuck in a flower. Okay, a nice yellow daisy with the orange center, kind of reminiscent of this one, but just different colors. And this one is showing up again lighter. This is sort of more beige than the uh, salmon-y, light salmon color. There's a, a chip right there. Not a problem. Y shape back. It's a little loose. I would want to tighten it up. Um, a little enamel paint there, a little touch up in the center. Good as new. Or it could be repurposed. Mother of Pearl. Often these say, made in Jerusalem. Or Bethlehem, not Jerusalem, made in Bethlehem. What does this one say? Made in. I think it says made in Taiwan. Yeah, so made in Taiwan. Um, there's quite a, a trade in shell, uh, mother of pearl jewelry from Bethlehem. Look at the little tiny painted eye. Oh, now it's all out of focus again. What did I do? There we go. Look at the tiny painted eye on that little fish. Sweet little pin. Um... I used to teach um, about the fish philosophy that uh, was developed for the um, Pike's Place Fish Market in Seattle where, because they were looking for a way to build loyalty and energize their employees who basically were carting and hauling and throwing around fish all day. Um, and uh, the principles that they developed um, were then called the fish philosophy um, and were something that human resources was bringing into different companies. And I, So I used to teach about that and I used to have a ton of fish jewelry. Now this guy's missing part of his tail. Um, he's a little sharp there. So I'm not sure how to fix that unless we made the both tails short, but I think I didn't even notice it at first. So if we kind of shaped it, it, he might not look broken. But hey, you could do all kinds of things with him. Hang him this way from a pendant. So that's a little more difficult thing to fix. Here is a, aww, not everybody is into Christmas. 
But this is a Christmas pin of Mary holding baby Jesus under the star. So that I will put in my Christmas pin collection. Um, because that's I've never seen one of those. That's unique. Oh, well, here's a cute little ring. Doesn't really look like uh, it turns. Oh, there we go. There's the cat's eye. That's kind of cute. I don't know that it's silver. I, mean, I can see something written inside there. You can kind of, oh. Just not enough that, let's see if we hold it like that. Can we see? No. <laughs> Guess what? Good old nickel silver, just like the uh, the belt buckle. That's a cute little ring. I might keep that to go on, on my baby finger. Um, another pearly brooch. This pearl looks like he's been dented, like he was soft at the time he was made, and somehow he got dented or melted or whatever. Um, you know, except for that little flaw, these are all in great shape. There could have been a maker's name down there at one point, or before the the um, the mold got borrowed by another company or was stopped was copied. But there's definitely no name there now. Um, so pretty poor. I think this would be really nice on a Christmas toque or hat because it's kind of soft, so it's not gonna it's gonna look neat with. Uh, the knitted background. What else have we got here? Oh, a puffy heart. Oh, that's always useful. Great shape. Nothing wrong with it. Um... These kind of chains always make me think of Sarah Coventry because they had all those flat, um, that flat type of chain. So here is a locket missing the center cabochon or picture, whatever. Oh, and the pearls are just on a, um, on a wire, so they need to be re-glued because that's, see how that's lifting? But that's easy to do. There's some cleanup to be done there. And then somehow this opens, because there's the hinge. So. Oh, okay. So there's, again, some discoloration there. But it feels like there's a piece of uh, plastic on each side to put a photo under. Oh, and it says underneath there, Avon. So um, you can't, I don't know if you'll be able to see it because it's partially in the, there you go. Kind of see the shadow of Avon. Um, I'll have to look up and see what possibly should go on that. The chain would be good to repurpose even if the rest of it doesn't have uh, anything useful. Oh, this is cool. I have something like this. I have a pin that's very similar. It's not ex exactly the same, but the greens, the golds, the blacks, and it's much, mine's much shorter and more uh, thicker, wider, whatever, taller. So cool. I'll have to go dig mine out and uh, find it and maybe show you how, uh, how can I still want to focus? I guess because it's so shiny. Anyway, I have another pin like this. That's cool. And this says something on the back. I'm going to look at it before I... Whoops. There's two necklaces left. Okay, so this says Steel Time Stainless Steel on the back. And it's got numbers as if this were a clock, which... 
kind of is perplexing to me. It's just a like a lock pendant. Oh. I don't know if it this was the way it was on there it was uh but uh Okay, a lobster claw clasp and good shape, you know. Good shape, nothing much to that. Save it maybe for a, yeah, a fun gift bag or something. Now here's something. It's got three initials, D, C, and then S. Because S is in the center and it's larger, that's probably the last name of the person. There's three different ways. There's three ways you can do it. You can do one, two, three, like your first, middle, and last initial, but we usually when there's a larger one in the center, that's the last initial. So DSC on a pretty little chain. Anything else missing here? There's some writing on the... I didn't mean to knock my camera over. Wow. <laughs> If anybody admitted to knocking their camera on purpose, well, that would be funny. But I guess you could. Oh, it doesn't want to focus on this thing. There we go. I have no idea. I didn't mean to knock my camera over. Well, <laughs> if anybody admitted to knocking their camera on purpose, well, that would be funny. But I guess you could. Oh, it doesn't want to focus on this thing. There we go. I have no idea. Oh, a diamond shape with letters inside of it. Is I will draw a picture of it. So it looks like this. So there's, and then there's an S and an N. So interesting marking. For all I know, for all I know, it may be supposed to go this way and mean nickel silver. <laughs> Except it's gold tone. So, I don't know. <laughs> oh. There we go. Well, that is half of my craft lot box. One, two, three, four, let's see, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, oh, 28. So that's half of it's 28 pieces. So, you know, we're looking like 50 cents a piece for crap lot stuff. That's pretty darn good. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll be back with more. This is Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes. Hope you have a great day.